So today we are working on the July XOX kit which is the cement candle holder and the candle making. So the first project we're going to do out of the two projects is going to be the cement holder. So I'll just move all of the... I'm Sarah by the way and this is Donna, my mum. We're super professional at XOX kit clearly. <laughs> out of the way so in your kit you will have received the template you need to cut this template out with your own scissors these were not supplied in the kit um, just cut along the solid line and then with a uh, butter knife just need to go over the dotted lines just so it's a little bit easier when you need to fold uh, the template so that does take a little bit of time so here's one that I made earlier what you want to make sure is um, we've allocated where the tab should meet up on the template. What you want to do is make sure the tab goes on the outside of the template because if you put it on the inside and it ends up being on the inside, your final product is actually going to have little tab marks all along it, which you don't want. So make sure the tab goes on the outside. Um, the sticky tape you are provided with, just take little, cut little strips of it off and stick it to the side of your table and just lightly stick all the tabs together. My suggestion is to start with A and move your way through the alphabet. It will be the easiest way to put your template together and stick it together. Once you've got a rough template together, use as much sticky tape as you can to get the entire template covered in sticky tape. Because the cement will have water in it, the last thing you want is for your template to be falling apart. So this sticky tape is what's going to hold it together when it gets wet. So here's one that I made earlier beautifully. So now that that's done, we've supplied you with two gloves. Please wear the gloves because the oxide stains. We've also provided you with a face mask. If you're working inside in particular, wear the face mask. I suggest you don't work inside. I suggest you work in a very aerated area. Uh, I'm not going to use a face mask today because we are pretty much outside. Um, and also it's really hard to understand me when I'm wearing a face mask. But I will wear the gloves because I don't want oxide on me. Also, don't wear your best going out clothes unless you want to give them the arty look. So, set your template aside. You've got these two mixing cups. They show you with the arrows where to fill up to with your cement or concrete. Oh. It's really hard to open the bags with gloves on. Hold on. <laughs> Got it. Oops, oops, the bag's broken. There we go. So fill it up to the line. Or thereabouts. Okay, you can see that that's roughly a little bit lower, but that's okay. And you're going to put the rest in your large container that your oxiding your cement actually came in. Now to the oxide, you're going to put one of the packets in one of the mixing cups. There's the white and the black. Now I've put up on the blog a couple of different products that you can use instead of these uh, cement oxide colorings. Um, we've done a little bit of experimentation with different colorants. So if you really enjoyed this project and you want to explore the different colors you can use, make sure you jump on our blog and check out the post. That's done and you've got your concrete as normal. Now, you will need some water. What you want to do, I'm just going to move these out of the way for the moment, is pour and stir, pour and stir. So you don't want it to be too runny, you don't want it to be sloppy, but you want it to be runny enough that it will pour into your template. That's 
probably a little bit too thick. There we go, that's not too bad. So you want to do the same for the black and the white. Oh, that reminds me. It is a little bit easier if you stir your black oxide in and your white oxide in into the cement mix before you pour the water in. That's just a little tip that I found made it a little bit easier. Okay, let's add that water now. be stirred a bit more it's taking a while there we go and the same with the white mix it up before you add the water So what you're going to do is you're going to pour each of these in. It's up to you how you want to mix them. You can layer them on top of each other. So you've got layered line marks or you can marble them, um, which the example on the instruction sheet that's been marbled, uh, it's up to you what you'd like to do. So if you pour the main concrete in first, I could probably have a little bit more water added to it, but that's okay. the black lovely marble mine slightly just give it a little mix around not too much make sure you get to the edges of the template if you're going to marble them lovely and then what you want to do is you want to bang it oopsie so the air bubbles get out and so that the sand rises to the top which makes it a bit stronger and then you want to grab your plastic shot glass and put it in the center at the top you want to leave it about five mil out so that's not too hard to get out once it's set now you will need to put something heavy on this shot glass to keep it in there or else it will end up floating out overnight so I'm going to put no that's not small enough and put these scissors on top of it now what you want to do is you want to leave this for 24 hours to set or even better 48 hours once it's set you can actually peel you might use your scissors to cut the sticky tape a little bit you can peel the template off and then you've got your sandpaper here to sand it back a little bit if there's some rough spots Okay, so the second part of our kit is the candle making. So what you want to do is you want to grab the wick stickers and peel the square backing off. Stick that to your bottom of your wick. Pull the circle part off and then stick it to the bottom of your glass, like so. If you want, you can trim off 
these wicks if they're just a little bit too long for the moment. Oops. Because they do get in the way for these smaller candles. But we have provided longer ones, so if you want to use a different glass that you've got, fantastic. Now, uh, you will have melted the wax as per the instructions provided. My suggestion is you keep heating, stirring, heating, stirring, heating, stirring. Once it's hot enough, you want to peel. Once it's all melted, you want to peel the candle, um, the um, crayon, and stir that in. My suggestion is to stir in the candle a little, little bit earlier than I am right now, um, so it gets melted in the microwave a little bit more. Depending on how dark you want the colour to be, um, I'm going to put the whole thing in there. And while you're doing that, you can also add in your essence oils. Stir that in. So, once you've stirred all of this in and it's all melted, which it almost has, what you want to do is pour this into your glasses, making sure not to pour any onto the edges. So you want to pour very carefully and very slowly. Pour to about 5 mils, 10 mils from the top. Then we've provided, so you can see the wick's gone to the side there, so we've provided you with some pegs to make sure that you hold that wick in the right spot in the centre. Pour the next one. And a peg. Lovely. And the last one. Well, this one's going to be a dark one because it's got all the colour left in there because I haven't stirred mine in properly. Oops, this one's going to be a chunky one. Not to worry. So what we want to do is leave them to dry um, and to set. Leave them about uh, overnight if you can and then you want to trim down the wick to be level with the top of the glass. My suggestion is to leave them about a week before you actually light them. Um, and then once that's done they should fit nicely into your candle holder. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to go over to the blog to check out some of the candle making and cement making tips that we've got there for you. Uh, other than that, we'll see you next month.